<laughs> exactly like that. Good evening, Zanz, and welcome to another jam packed episode of Trending Essay right here on SABC3. The top trends are fully loaded and hot topics are ready to be dished out, and your prime time squad is ready to rock. I am the king of the house, hottest mama in town, dude. Yes. And I'm rolling with the insanely funny and fabulous with pink hair today, Lisa Ho. What? 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 <laughs> what a deal, mama. <laughs> <laughs> and the man that always brings the flavor with that hot sauce in my bag swag i'm talking about mo flavor that's right that's right that's right <laughs> and the one and only emperor from a place called i don't know Mlazi, somewhere far <laughs> in i don't know where is it green there my blair my pronouns are his royal highness to you <laughs> right on and get into top trends because i can't <laughs> Okay, so this next story popped up all over the timeline after a video from hashtag MacG's podcast came to light. Take a look. Celebrities jump on because they just want to trend and yeah. jump on whatever outrage is happening at the yeah. time. I mean, f***ing Tana Tabuti, what the f*** is she doing? And, and I know she's a woman, um, a GBV activist. We should have seen this coming. That's why 5FM demoted her to graveyard. <laughs> they saw that she's a scam. Sure. Oh. Oof. Not like that. Even I couldn't duck from any of that. Mm -hmm. Naturally, the clip um, came, you know, just on the back of another incident a couple of weeks ago where Mac G, along with his co-host, Sol Penduga, had some very transphobic and homophobic things to say, views that many people didn't quite like, and it sparked a massive, massive outrage, as expected. So Naledi Chirwa had to say, a homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic bigot mm -hmm, uses his platform to publicly abuse a woman and humiliate her. And y'all pick apart the part where he is right and amplify the same guy, eh, Elunaman. While Dolls Tobeha weighed in with this, I'm not a fan of Mac G, but he's right. Oh. Mm. People aren't consistent with their outrage. If their friends slash faves do wrong, they turn a blind eye. But if it's someone they actively don't riot, like, they'll riot. Even if they did the same thing with their friends, faves have done. Mm. And lastly, Ntabi K gave a different take with this. Mac G is talking about something that we've all seen. Black Twitter slash black people are jealous of other black people's success. Ugh. Whew. Anyway, Black Twitter wants every little mistake made by a successful black person to always end a deliberately tarnished career. With, to always end with a deliberately tarnished career, sorry. And that's what they're all about. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys make of the situation? Let's start from the top with the whole incident that got us here in the first place. Yeah. And then I guess his comments, if we can. Uh, I mean, here's the thing, right? You can have a podcast, a radio show, a TV show and comment on any issue that you think is of national importance or a conversation that we need to have. But I think you can do that without dragging people, yeah. without, you know, cutting people into pieces, right? Surely. And, and also, I think we've got the right to focus on whatever issues we feel are relevant. Yeah. And we can focus on different issues at the same time, right? But, but I also think that, you know, I watched, you know, I didn't just rely on that little clip that we also saw. I actually watched from the beginning and I, and I heard him excuse himself and not really apologize or at least stand with his apology that he released with the team. And he spoke about how we as people want to pull down black successful men when we all know that, you know, the there's GBV, there's uh, men abusing their power in the positions that they're in. So you can't just say we just woke up one day and decided that we want to pull black men down or successful men in high positions. Mm -hmm. They haven't been treating us well, especially as women or just in general. They're abusive. They, 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 they kill people. They, they take their position of power and hire women and do all sorts of crazy things. So you can't use that excuse in this day and time and act like that's not a reality for every single black woman in this planet. I think you can't stand behind that and say, oh no, they're just trying to pull me down. Yeah, especially when you've literally come from homophobia transphobia you doubling down with um you know being super misogynistic today so like i don't even understand why we continue to even talk about him why we even giving him a platform a chance a space i don't want to hear his name again like i literally think he's trash i think his co-host is trash i know he doesn't care about the statement but yeah trash no, trash 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 uh, trash actually um lisa Ho, we need to actually have these conversations and it's unfortunate that McGee keeps finding himself in these positions whenever he, puts he actually he puts himself in these positions because he could have raised that issue without being sexist and reducing a woman who's, wo who's worked in this industry just to uh, her body. You know, he could have actually raised the point, Yoguti. We do have a problem, especially on Twitter, when it comes to prominent people where some people are 
easy targets. When they make mistakes, mm -hmm. everybody comes out and nozzles them. Yeah. And wherever, but wherever some people who are linked to the bag actually do things, some people choose to be silent. Okay, but is it a mistake if it's been the same thing for 10 no, years? No, I'm not. He did it 10 I, years ago. No, no, he's no. doing it again this year. I don't think it's a no, mistake anymore. Listen, like, well, they're what coming I'm saying, for him because he refuses to change. No, take a I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna conflate the issues in terms of what he did because what what he did was problematic with, with with Saul what they said and then this was also problematic to actually say those things about Tando, uh, Tando Tabete what I'm saying is that Meg G actually has a very powerful platform and for it to be used by a lot of homophobes and all problematic people to follow him and think what is their martyr and then him not calling them out is a bit problematic so I do employ you Meg G Uti. whenever your videos come out and they go on Twitter look at the comment that the comments that come under that and if you are apologetic my guy and you are and you don't stand for those things then you better call out those people that actually follow you don't be a trump about it and also one of the big things is when a lot of people get into this industry as celebrities djs artists etc yeah. there's almost an expectation that you have to comment yeah. on every single yeah. issue out there and is it an, an unfair expectation if i see you know acts of violence against women and children mm -hmm or whatever other, you know, horrible things are happening out there. Should I be commenting on everything? Or can I choose as a mo flavor that, you know what, um, today I've chosen to comment on this issue. Something else might happen next week and I might keep quiet. Am I wrong to keep quiet? Apply the same paint, Mo. The same aggression that you have just apply it. Don't pick and choose. Whew. All right, guys. Let's ring it in. Let's ring it in. I think I might even need to take a sip of my... <laughs> what I on a lighter, <laughs> more uh, relaxed note. I stumbled upon uh, this next story on my timeline after the old town road and my favorite. Oh, my gosh. I love him so much. And hitmaker, Grammy Award winning rapper Lil Nas X <laughs> shared this post on his Twitter page. Take a look at this. Um, so he woke up. He was <laughs> bored. He got boobs, <laughs> which look cuter and perkier than mine. Oh, love Soon it. after that, social media was conflicted with the rapper's latest purchase. And this is what Tweeps had to say. Olivia Gabriella said, I hope those boobs, those fake boobs, just blended in like drag race boobs. You're cool, but in my opinion, a woman's body is not a costume or an outfit to wear like a freak show like that. Much love, XOXO. <laughs> Gabriel demonstrated his thirst with these tweets. These look so natural. Need to feel them, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> and Lay had this to say. Hold up. Wait a minute. I know when people become rich and famous, they go crazy like buying cars, shoes and chains. But this... Bought some titties? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, there are many unnecessary things. And speaking of unnecessary pur uh, purchases, so, you know, celebrity culture is synonymous with, you know, flaunting and flexing your wealth, all the money you have, your riches. And sometimes the purchases can be very outlandish. I mean, there are some celebrities that have purchased some ridiculous items. I mean, if you think about it, right? And I just want to know from you, what are some of the the craziest and most expensive celebrity purchases that made you be on some WTF. Oh. Like, did he really? Did uh, she really just spend all that money? Maybe maybe I'm speaking because uh, I'm, I'm poor compared to him. But uh, I'm poor. You're more than poor. I'm more than, I, I, I have a problem when people tell me the price of their homes in America. So when Trevor Noah bought that 27 million US dollar house, I immediately converted guys and I was just like, Jish, you could have brought the whole of Pretoria, Mamelodi, and Harangua. He doesn't even have that many kids. Why would he need a house like that? I mean, because he makes real money, unlike us or anyway. Um, so my purchase, guys, our government keeps embarrassing us with these unveilings. And I can't believe someone took money, had a ceremony, bought cameras, took a private jet, and bought this. <laughs> <laughs> and thought we should celebrate this. That's right. a beautiful tap. I like the color. I like where it they is. They were like, come Stop on, it. celebrate Stop the tap. Guys, with, la, la. with tabs. It's location, location, location. It. Yep. <laughs> now, you're going to love this one. Lil Uzi Vert, all right? Uh. He's forehead encrusted with a 24 million dollar pink diamond which is 20 times more than any uh, normal diamond i mean this is an example of somebody who's watched way too much oh. avengers you know <laughs> way too much black Panther, and now this infinity stone idea <laughs> has literally gotten to his head oh, <laughs> i just want i just Thanos. want to actually <laughs> implore him i just want please Lil Uzet, when you come to south it's africa like oh. yeah, Lil Lil Uzet. 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 i don't know i don't go to prague guys 
Please just walk around the Milazi for two minutes. And let's see what happens. That's a hot mess. <laughs> no, from weird to actually worse. Something I found really strange was uh, Kanye's birthday to Kim for her 40th. Um, he had a hologram of her dad. Oh, that was so and he, like, it's so weird. Please take a look. Sure. It's, like, it's creepy. Happy birthday, Kimberly. Look at you. You're 40 and all grown up. You look beautiful, just like when you were a little girl. So Kim's father passed away some years ago, um, and uh, Kanye thought it would be cute, I guess, to bring him back to life, I guess, mm. in a hologram. It's so strange. I think it's creepy. I, I, I can't. I can't. I just, you know what? Nothing that happens in that family is creepy. Nothing is anymore. real. Yeah, and, and I'm just like, <laughs> no, wait. Bodies. No, those bodies are real. If no, they're not. Okay. Oh, well, they're really expensive. The kids yeah, are real. Expensive. The kids are real. The kids are real. It's real, real. expensive. Yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> Listen, and you can claim tax on them. Wow. Because it's a work Guys, expense. I get that rich. I'm literally going to do everything. Like, people will <laughs> um, not recognize same me. Here. I to nip and tuck it all. <laughs> right. All right. On that real note, we are going to go on a short ad break. And when we come back, we'll continue with our trends and topics. Later on in the show, we talk all things red flags and toxic relationships in our new segment called Flowers, Not Fists. So it's in partnership with the Red Hose, our voter cop in the building. If you don't, and you don't want to miss that, it's star on three. me on that last link. Let's try this again. <laughs> Welcome to Trading SA. Join the conversation with the hashtag Zion3. So Rasta recently mm -hmm. popped up on my timeline seeking donations uh, from his supporters to further continue with his passion and painting. He said, po, 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 Boyaka. it's been a very busy 2021 <laughs> with us losing our beloved and, and public figures. As a result, I've officially run out of paint. Please DM for donation, Buffalo Soldier. First of oh. all, first of all, those man. are the weakest shots I have man. ever made. I wouldn't run. Oh man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't run. Uh, you know, Rasta just, you know, he just grabbed my heart. I mean, the US has what people call Jean-Michel Basquets. Don't even know how to pronounce that. The Netherlands has Vincent van Gogh. Oh. And then, of course, we have Urasta Bafuetu, right? A true visionary. I mean, he's a controversial modernist, arguably the greatest of our time. <laughs> and, you know, it just got me thinking about Rasta. Is he somewhat in a position now where, you know, he's a prominent figure within our cultural landscape? Is. is Rasta at a point where he needs to start being celebrated, where the fame now turns into fortune. Should we be donating mm. to Rasta to fuel this passion? Mm. Huh? Mm. I mean, come on, guys. I, I personally think we should. We definitely should. How much are we You see, like... Rasta is an artist, guys. Mm. And all the guy wants to do is paint. And That's any, all he wants to do. And anybody who says anything, and anybody who says anything about Urasta actually does not know fine art. They don't know your Van Goghs and whatever. Yes. Urasta is doing exactly what those guys were yes. doing in the Renaissance era. Okay. That's the thing. Cool, cool. Love cool. How's about yeah. we donate some uh, art classes? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think also if you want to paint and you said, Jesse wants to paint, paint well? No, he does paint well, guys. It's just that you guys don't understand art. <laughs> anyway, guys, all jokes aside, Rasta has been successfully pursuing his passion for years and his work is constantly recognized and is part of all the relevant art world conversations. <laughs> you may agree or disagree with his creative process, but who are you to tell him otherwise? Are you Tao? <laughs> anyway, so as trending, we want to reflect and celebrate the man behind the faces. Oh. Introducing the Tsai Gallery presenting final frames. Portrait by Rasta. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we all know an exhibition is nothing without a bidding war. So, guys, hmm. how much would you pay for our first piece? Beautiful. Tell us about it. Uh, um, this is Ma Spongile Kumalo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Era. Iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is the kind of piece you could literally place in your lounge. Perfect mic. Amazing oh. color. Mm. You know, it's dark and light. And I, and I see a bit of inspiration from, yeah. from Debele culture. Where would you, what would you do? Where would you place it? Um, I would definitely, this is in a foyer. Mm. As you walk into the house, a legend. It's an arrival. I, I take it. It <laughs> says, this All is right. a rich woman's home. Yes, <laughs> that's definitely. It. That's that piece. Now. All right, someone must have a, a perfect place for this next Oof. piece. Oof. 
man now oh, this man. is Look this at is more renaissance yes. it, you see plays mm. with color oh. and then you can see it is i'm happy but sad you know i would put it yeah. i would put it next to the tv because when i'm watching keeping up with the kardashians a white woman goes black goes with the theme <laughs> yeah that's where i'd put it i like, I like that and Kim there's value in that yeah huh Mm. Ah, sure. Anyway, this I was there to <laughs> this third piece is super uncanny. What's he? Man. Ivo, oh. how much would you pay for Hidden Connie? Oh, I can't. Crouching. Can I tell you something? In my room. I would put her in my room. Yes. Yeah. No, I, 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 why, I would, why would you put her in your room? Would, a queen with a king. Okay. Iconic. Okay. I'd put this by the bar. <laughs> that is Karabo Muroka right there. Wow. You need her by the but bar. But would you pay once? I would Twice? Pay. Oh, three Twice. Times. Times. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> and from one very unsettling but pricey piece to another, our final piece, and this might just be the winner, ladies and gentlemen, oh. our very own Miss Universe, oh. our proudly oh, Zozi man. in the mix. That I present to you this beautiful art piece oh. resembling a very interesting era in South Africa. Yes. I could easily mm. say that this piece was put together somewhere at the dawn of democracy oh. in 1994. Look I at that. Mean, that. It's got 1994 iconic. written all over it. As that an is artist, a piece, I am proud. I am honored. That is definitely a piece that you want to take up space. Yes, yes. take up Cement. space. Yes. And cement itself. Yes. What she is doing yes. in the portrait. I mean, how big did he think she was? Mm. <laughs> how, much, how much do we pay for this? I mean, remember, we I'm are raising like, cash for us. How much do we pay for this 150. piece? 150. I'm starting. Thousand rand, right? Yes. Well, rand is done. Rand. Rand? We don't know. Okay, guys, do you guys, do you guys really believe that we should donate to Rasta? Absolutely. Because I really do. I yep. really, I say that Rasta is an integral part of every funeral in South Africa. And if you don't have Rasta at your funeral, you did not achieve anything. So do you want him at yours? I definitely want Rasta to paint me. Cool, cool. Those pictures are going to be worth thousands of rands in 20 years time. Glad and you all thousands, all millions. <laughs> millions of rands. <laughs> I agree. A very... And how many, how many artists do we really know? I mean, he's gone and made sure that people know and care about what artists mm. are. I love it. Rasta, mm. I personally love your work. Mm. I can't mm. wait to have you on the show mm. so that we can, uh, you know, have you painting us while we're still alive. We're going to take a, a short break. <laughs> <laughs> but I would strongly advise that you stay tuned because when we return, we get into our conversation. The red flags that your relationship is toxic. You don't want to miss out on this one. So do join in the conversation and hashtag Tsa on three. Boom! on three. I like that. Not once, not twice. <laughs> Welcome back to Training SA right here on SABC3. Now, gender-based violence has always been a crisis-level issue in our country with tens of thousands of women and children affected, abused and killed. So Vodacom has created a GBV command center in effort to actually provide the much-needed help and support to victims of what I would call the second national pandemic. Now, as part of our new friendship with Vodacom, we'd like to introduce a new feature that we like to call hashtag flowers, not fists, where each Tuesday we take on what will be the tips and hacks on how you can be more aware of domestic related abuse, red flags, and what to do to help yourself or your loved ones in their hour of need. With that said, it's time for our first edition of hashtag flowers, not fists. Today's Flowers Not Fists is a survival guide and it's all about red flags that you are in a toxic relationship. Now, sometimes romance and affection can actually be a bit way, way too much. And I'm curious if you guys know anything about uh, love flooding. Do you know what it is? It's the, love, mm, the floodgates are open. Like yeah, a lot it's of what love. South Africans do to me. They just keep on flooding me but with love. There must be a catch though. Yeah. Otherwise, why the phrase, yeah. right? Uh, uh, Okay, all right. Let, wow, my Blair, I have no words for at this point, but you know what? Let's take a look at this video and see if my Blair, the emperor of Umlazi, is right. So yeah. love flooding is something that people do where in the very beginning of the relationship, they just give you so much time and attention and so mm -hmm. much praise. And when you actually think about it, they don't know you. They have no reason right. to be giving you this, but they're just trying to entice you and get you hooked off the bat. Someone who starts doing reductions, and that means that they start limiting the time you can have with your friends, limiting the time that you can spend with your family. Little by little, they're trying to remove other healthy relationships from your life yeah. so that you become dependent on them. 
Okay, that's okay, not so what it is. No. Yeah. Have, have any of you guys have experienced any of that? I just want to say it's hard to dodge something like that because we all want love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when somebody yes. is prepared to give it to you, you're just there How for do you it. even know when it becomes the toxic amount? Because now they're talking about love flooding is getting a lot of affection and that's what you want to do. Surely it's beginning. right in the beginning where it's like, chop, how do you chop, know chop, when it's chop, too chop, much? Chop, chop. I love you so much. Oh my gosh, look at you. Let me buy you roses today do and then buy some flowers tomorrow and then buy you chocolate. You can't breathe. Oh my gosh, let me buy you a cock clothes. Do you know where I see this? I see this on Twitter whenever somebody new comes through and they flood them with love and then they go to them wow (laughs) guys now gaslighting is a buzzword Mm. among millennial couples and Mm. many of us find ourselves in situations where we can't tell whether we're being gaslit or not Mm. now how do you know if you're being gaslit or just getting constructive criticism check this video out now gaslighting refers to the act of undermining another person's reality by denying facts the environment around them or their feelings Targets of gaslighting are manipulated into turning against their own memory, emotions, and possibly their own core identity. People use gaslighting in relationships for two primary reasons. Number one, so they don't have to fix and work on their own shit. And number two, so they can create insecurities in others and use that as a form of control. So guys, I mean, I know that gaslighting is something that everybody experiences, but does yeah. anyone have a more vivid example that they can share with the viewers and with us on, on being gaslit? No, it's, it's actually when someone in a relationship and you guys are having a situation that's been, co- that's been happening and going on, and then somebody actually pretends as if whatever you are talking about and the issue that you're bringing forward is actually not real. Yeah, yeah like you, you that. Yeah. Is it a personal uh, example you have maybe over time? Oh, that you oh, my goodness. I don't know. Everyone has. I think oh, at least yeah. most people in relationships, you yeah. have that feeling where this person is acting like, I'm crazy? Yeah, I'm yeah crazy. he's just like, I'm yeah. not crazy, you know? Yeah. 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 Also, so, if you've dated a narcissist, yeah. You are definitely being gaslit at every point in so your life. So you did it, you did it a cheetah. Anyway. Wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not all men. Mm. So, I mean, I see all these points, but you know, I think what really trips a lot of people in relationships is this controlling behavior where mm. you're caught between thinking that someone is just being overprotective and it's all sweet. When in actual fact, they are controlling like this. It took you 10 minutes to get home. Nope. Google Maps says it takes eight minutes. So who is she? Who is she? Where is she at? I mean, that's like, you know, that's low-key controlling. Yeah. That's not even low-key, that's high key. That's very, you know? that's, yeah. Also, the thing exactly. when someone's like, let's go, you know, you don't even realize it's, it's getting to that beyond, like, oh, I'm guiding her through the bathroom. It's like very maneuvering. I mean, if I, if I had four gigs tonight, you know, obviously I'm going to get home at, you know, at whatever time. Oh, you know, and, and we had a conversation mm-hmm. earlier and we spoke about the fact that, you know, someone uh, was in a situation where she had a friend who had to drop her location every time she moved mm-hmm. to her person. So if I'm going from the club to McDonald's, mm-hmm. now you have to know where I am from yeah. McDonald's to, it's such, oh, it's such a nightmare. I've also had a situation where a friend had to call and give the phone to everybody there to say like, no, we're here and it's just us girls and it's just this, this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it's also actually, an example of that. It actually, it's a conversation about phones as well, like how you brought that up. I always see people that say, I want your password and whatever. And I'm just like, for me, that's very toxic. Stay away from Once my phone. Once you want the, Thank the you. password. Right, and then have... there's the touchy subject of cloth cloth. Mm. And the entitlement that some partners seem to have on their significant other's bodies. There's, this is no fine line. It's clearly... Red, a red, red flag, flag warning. warning. Mm. Yeah. And of course, we need to remember, most importantly, that GBV is everybody's problem, all right? Yeah. So if you or someone you know is a victim of abuse, love them enough to do something about it. Encourage them to download the Bright Sky app. It's free from their app store. Or they can always contact the Vodacom GBV command center, which is 0800 428 428. It's available 24 hours, seven days a week. Oh, man, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, we actually we had a really interesting show, yeah? Mm. Mac G? Yeah. Mm. Red flags. So, good all vibes, topical, right? all on the same topic. All happy, oh. Rasta. And we also covered Renaissance artists. Right? All in one go. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. That was absolutely epic. We had a good time. And we know we did uh, that you did too, rather. And that's how we wrap up the Tuesday edition of Trending SA. And you know the deal. You can join us again tomorrow right here on your home of all things entertainment. We will see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. on ACBC3 for another exciting edition of Hashtag Ta on 3. Good night.